your customers. And then we'll talk a little bit about the pairing uh, with the chocolates in there. So uh, start pulling this stuff out of your bag if you haven't already. And you got a bottle, a little mini bottle. We don't sell these. It's 100 milliliters of Angel's Libby bourbon finish your pork barrels. Um, don't, don't drink all of it. If you drink all this, you can't make the cocktail. So <laughs> you got that. And the second ingredient for this cocktail is going to be the honey. Now I put three um, compostable little containers in your bag and they have three different types of honey. Now I really want you to, to taste all these, grab a spoon or a little knife or whatever it takes, you know, and, and just taste each one of them. Because you're gonna choose you're gonna be choosing one of these types of honey to put in this cocktail. And it really is gonna change the flavor of the whole thing. So the first one that, that um, the first one I'm, I'm, I labeled it spring. It's the it's a Catskills spring uh, raw wildflower honey um, harvested in the spring. Different different uh, flowers are out there. It um, if you compare it to the fall, which you, is the second one, uh, you, if you can see the, the, the difference in color, um, the spring is very um, it it's it's just more fluid. And the fall honey is just more concentrated. I think the fall has got more pollen or something in it. I, I, I'm not a honey expert, but try the two together and see what the differences are. It, it, you'll, you'll be very surprised. The last is kind of like a, the last honey that, that you'll have, I'm going to write salt on there, is a salted honey from New York. It's called Bee's Knees. And it's, it's from Brooklyn. And they add saline or salt into the to the honey um, if you decide to use that i'd probably use it just a little bit less because you don't want this to be too salty but you kind of get an idea just i just want to throw it out wire out there for you guys um uh, just a different type of honey uh it's locally produced um and the company is here in brooklyn and it, it's it, it, it it'll just be an outlier you know so when you when you taste all these three honeys, you're really going to want to try to uh, decide which one you want to use in this cocktail. Um, blood orange. I haven't done this cocktail with a blood orange. We're doing it today, and you you're going to do it as well. Um, this is just a organic blood orange, and it's in in your cocktail kit. And all you're going to want to do is cut a little bit off and. I'm gonna squeeze it like this, but you could just squeeze it with your hands, and that's part of the cocktail, P part of what is in this cocktail. Lastly, we're making a tea cocktail. So you have two bags of Lapsang Shushan, which is uh, a Chinese tea, herbal tea that is smoked. It's very smoky. When you open up the package, it's like this. We grab the tea bag out, and you open this up. Smell it. You've never unless you've you've dealt with this type of tea before. Uh, you've probably never smelled tea that that's this smoky. So, so as you know, Angel's Envy was started by three generations of Hendersons. Lincoln Henderson was forty years at Brown Foreman. You know, he created Woodford Reserve, which is on your shelf. Uh, Gentleman Jack, which was a big uh, change for Jack Dales, uh, because it, it just had a different taste profile than what you're used to with Jack. And then he retired um, at the end of 40 years. That's not all he did. He did a lot more than that, but that's just some of the things that, that are highlighted in his career. Um, and he worked with uh, Japanese whiskeys, consulted with them in his retirement until his son Wes approached him and said, hey, let, let's, let's make a family, let's make a family product, uh, a, a, a whiskey, let's start with a bourbon. And uh, dad, what, what kind of ideas do you have? And so Lincoln said, yeah, okay. Um, looked through his, all his notes and referenced a bunch of things that he wasn't able to do with Brown Foreman because, you know, it's a big, big company and, and he didn't have complete control over everything. And deci decided, Hey, let's do a finished bourbon, which entails using, uh, you know, 
to be a bourbon, you have to you have to use a virgin uh, oak barrel that's charred on the inside. And um, I would say most, well, all bourbons, that's where they, they leave off. And Lincoln decided, let's, let's do that process. And we decided to do it for, for four to six years. And then we'll put it into a port barrel that used to have ruby port.